back to the speed on the spinning hoop. So I already did this problem. Uh, I will link to my full derivation uh, down below. But what I want to do, and this is really uh, Andy Rundquist's fault because he started making new problems on it. Uh, I'll link his video down below too. Uh, I, I want to not, so okay, the bead on the hoop. So there's a, a hoop with the bead on there and the bead can rotate around the hoop and then the hoop spins this way. And so we're trying to find the equations of motion using the Lagrangian equation, Lagrangian uh, mechanics. And I did it, okay, I did it. Um, and so, so Andy said, hey, let's, let's make this free, which, okay, let's do that too. But then you have two degrees of freedom. It's a little bit more complicated. It's not impossible, but he used Mathematica. So I want to use symbolic uh, tools. Also, I'm going to use SymPy and I'm not really good with SymPy. So this is really a tutorial for me uh, as much as it could be for you. So I might make some mistakes and all I want to do is get the, the differential equation at the end. So let's, let's re recap super high speed uh, what I did here. So in this case, the, the disc, the hoop spins around, there is an angle uh, above the uh, vertical angle theta and that's my one generalized coordinate that describes the whole system because the, uh, the position of the hoop is defined by the uh, omega and time. So to do Lagrangian, we have to get uh, Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus the potential. And then we can use the Euler Lagrange equation to solve for uh, equations of motion. But in order to do that, really, you, you could kind of intuition get the kinetic energy of this hoop in terms of the uh, velocity, angular velocity, and the rotational velocity. And it's not, it's not a stretch, but I don't like doing it that way. I like doing it the, from the scratch. So the easiest way to write the kinetic energy is in terms of Cartesian coordinates, because I know how to get the, uh, the kinetic energy in Cartesian coordinates. So, but that means that I have to get the position of this mass in terms of x, y, and z. And so I got a relationship for, uh, this is z for x, y, and z in terms of the angle theta and omega. And then from this, I can take the derivatives and square them and add them together. I can also get the potential energy. And then I get a Lagrangian that just depends on theta, theta dot, and omega. Uh, and if you do that, then you can apply the old Lagrange equation and let's see, math, 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 math. I skipped a step, but this is, the, this is what I got at the end. This is my uh, differential equation of motion of theta double dot in terms of theta and omega. And then I could use this to do a numerical calculation. That's what I did in Python. It's all great. I'm going to do it again. Uh, but I just want to get this. The goal here is to get this equation with um, SymPy. Okay, so what the heck is SymPy? I usually use WebVPython, uh, which is not the full Python. So let's use the full Python. I'm going to jump over here to the screen, the computer, and we're going to start doing it this way. Um, welcome to this. It's going to be fun. Okay, so computer. Here we are. So I'm going to be using Jupyter Notebooks. So Jupyter Notebooks is a way to run Python with a bunch of models. There's more than one way to run Python. I like this way. Everyone else likes this way. So you have to like this way if everyone else likes this way. I'm just kidding. Do your own way. So first, First question, well, how do I get Jupyter Notebooks? Well, if I go down here to this site, this site's really great, uh, Anaconda, uh, anaconda.com. You can download Anaconda. It will install Python, Jupyter Notebooks. It will install the modules that you need, uh, NumPy, SciPy, uh, NumPy. Some people call it NumPy. I call it NumPy, but whatever. Uh, and then you'll be ready to go. You, you launch. The, it'll launch a browser window, uh, and from that browser, you can just make a new instance. I'm not sure if I'm using the correct terminology. Uh, so if I go down here to new Python 3, it will make a thing. I can save it. Um, I can't share it easily. I have to post it somewhere, so I'm not going to share it. So if you want to pay attention, pay attention. Um, the nice thing about uh, Jupyter Notebooks is it has these cells, and we can run different codes in different cells. Um, and then the cell, the, the main two cells that you're going to use are, I'm going to use, are Jupyter Notebooks, uh, or, Jup or Python, and Markdown, Markdown Text Language. And you can see right away, I don't know what I'm talking about, because I'm just kind of, when you don't exactly know what you're talking about, it's not hard to make a video. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and just start getting to work. I'm gonna click the cell, I'm gonna type M. That's gonna make it a markdown cell. So I'm gonna say, rot I'm gonna, I can just type stuff in markdown, make this bigger. Uh, rotating hoop with mass. Uh, I can put stuff here in a list more stuff I'm just I'm not really I don't really care about actually making this fully uh, great and then I can even put equations in here uh, t equals uh, this is latex frac one half m uh, let's put this as uh, dot x squared plus dot y squared plus dot z squared and then I can run that. So to run the cell, you can either click run or you can press shift enter and you'll see that, oh, it didn't work so I didn't put the, I can double click on, I didn't put the other, I gotta put this dollar sign at the end. And then it gives me nice latex equations. So it's really nice to make presentations and notebooks and say this is a notebook. Okay, let's just get started. And really I'm making this video for an audience of this guy because I'm gonna forget so I can go back and look at my own videos even though I hate hearing myself talk. So the first thing we're gonna do in Python is to import stuff. If, you use, if you're used to WebB Python, you don't have to import anything. It's already imported. All the things that you need are already there. But I need to import it here. So I'm going to just import one thing. Uh, I only need one thing for this to get the equation of motion, and that's SymPy. So I'm gonna import SymPy as SP. You could just import the whole thing and you'd be fine in this case, but I don't wanna do that. Uh, so now I'm gonna run that, and it's just to make sure it works, it's possible that you could import a module that doesn't work, um, and that's that's bad. So the SymPy as SP, whenever I want to call functions from the SymPy module, I'll say SP dot because I gave it the name SP. Some people say SMP, whatever you want to do, but that's what we're going to do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to declare uh, variables that I can use. I need to tell Python what variables I'm going to use. Okay, so let's just make some variables and declare them. We need to say that they're variables. So I'm going to say t, that's time. Uh, the radius of the, of the hoop r, uh, the mass uh, of the bead, g, uh, omega, and that's it. All right, and I do have theta, but that's a, that's a, very, a different kind of variable. These are just parameters, really, right? They're not going to, they don't depend on anything. They're just, they're just parameters. So I'm going to say these are sp uh, symbols is an object, and then I'm going to tell it what those symbols are going to represent, how I'm going to represent those. Now, w in there, I want it to be omega. So if I want to use latex in my symbols, which I can, I'm going to need this r here for raw, apparently. Uh, and then I'm just going to type what those variables are, t, t, r, m, g, and omega. You see there's the, the thing. And I think that's it. I think that's all I need to do. Um, I'm going to run that cell. Actually, I'm going to say, let's just try it. Now I'm going to type W, which should be omega. And there I printed it. Okay, so let's go make this bigger. Okay, is that bigger? So there, it did print omega. That's kind of cool. Okay, let's go back up here to the cell. I don't want to do that. I want to make my other variables. I'm going to make theta. So theta is going to be sp.symbols. Uh, and it's going to be r r theta but it's all it's a function of time right so i'm going to say i think this is class again i'm not an expert class is sp dot function and then i'm going to tell it what's it a function of so i'm going to say theta equals theta is a function of t and i already have t i think you already have to have that now i also i'm also going to need uh theta dot and theta double dot so i'm going to say theta if you watch my other video, I'm calling theta dot the derivative of theta with respect to time. Uh, theta dot theta dot is going to be equal to the derivative of theta with respect to time. And so I can do symbolic derivatives. I don't actually have to take the derivative. So I'm going to say sp dot diff for differential, the differential of theta with respect to time. Isn't that nice? And I'm going to do the same thing for theta double dot. It's the deriv deriv derivative derivative of theta dot with respect to time. Um, yeah, so let's run that. And you can even, well, let's print out theta, theta dd dot, run it just so you can see that it works. Okay, 
So we're, we're making some progress here. Now, I, I want to write the Lagrangian and write the Lagrangian equation. I mean, the Euler, the Euler Lagrange equation. But to do that, I need to get my kinetic energy, my potential energy. To do that, I need to get these things in terms of Cartesian coordinates. So I'm going to make some new variables. I'm going to make them down here, and I'm going to call them x, y, z. And they are sp.symbols uh, x, y, z. I'm going to let the, that's how they're represented. And they are functions of stuff. They're functions of theta. Yeah. So I'm going to say CLS equals function. SP, no, SP.function equals SP.function and capital matters. Okay. So now I can define my variables in terms of that function. This is that uh, in the diagram when I define x, y, and z in terms of theta. That's, I'm just going to write down that expression. So I'm going to say y equals uh, negative r times cosine theta. And that's wrong because cosine is not defined. So I need to say sp dot cosine. So sp dot cosine says get the cosine function from the SumPy module. And then I'm going to say x equals uh, r times sp dot sine theta times sp dot cosine omega times t. And then z equals r times sp dot sine theta times sp dot sine omega t. OK. We're, we're making progress. I don't get any errors when I run those, and that makes me happy. OK, now I can define my Lagrangian, well, my kinetic energy. So t is going to be 1 half. I, I don't have to say 0.5. This is symbolic, right? 1 half times m times x dot squared. So x dot squared is sp dot diff. It's the derivative of x with respect to t. And then I need to square that, which is star star 2. That's how we do squares in Python. Plus sp dot diff, 2fs, of y with respect to t squared, plus sp dot diff of z with respect to t squared. So you see, I have these functions. I have functions x, y, and z. And I know I have to take the derivative. I just don't care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make Python do it. Python takes the derivatives, okay? symbolically, not numerically. Now, I need to find my potential. u is just going to be uh, m times g times y. That's it, right? And then my Lagrangian, l, is equal to t minus u. If I want to print out the, the Lagrangian, I can. I can just say L. And I get this messy thing right here. And it is messy, right, because it didn't do all the squares and stuff. It just said, I'm going to do what you need me to do. Um, but it does look correct. And I don't really care to go any further with that. That's fine. OK, so now I want to do the Euler-Lagrange equation. So the Euler-Lagrange equation, I'm going to set it equal to a value. So I'm going to say, and I, I got this from another video. Um, I think it was a Mr. P solver. He's really great. And way, way, knows way more Python than I do, that's for sure. So I'm going to say Le equals uh, a differential equation. So all I need to do is write down the de derivatives, right? It's the derivative of L with respect to theta minus the derivative of, with respect to time, of the derivative of L with respect to theta dot. So I'm just going to write that down as an equation. So it's sp dot diff L theta minus sp dot diff uh, of sp dot diff of L theta dot t. Oh, I need, yeah. So this first part, this inside part, is the partial of L with respect to theta dot, because I only gave it one variable. And then I take the derivative of that with respect to time t. And that's my, that's my Euler Lagrange equation. Let's print that out. Looks messy. And because it didn't simplify at all, it doesn't care, and I don't care. We no one cares. We just want the answer. Okay. So now I want what I want to do and what I did before is to, to find theta double dot. So I'm going to uh, f define a new variable. I'm going to call this dd theta for theta double dot. And it's going to be, uh, I'm going to solve this equation, sp.solve uh, le 
for when it's set equal to zero, right? Because I didn't set that equal to zero. I only have the left side. I'm gonna set it equal to zero and solve for theta double dot. So set it equal to zero. And then I'm gonna print that DD theta. It's working. It didn't take this long before. I must've made a mistake. Aha, I didn't tell what to solve for. Uh, solve it for uh, theta double dot. There, it did it. And and you <laughs> look at that. That is the same answer, right? I The R's cancel right here and this term. So I get uh, omega squared cosine theta sine theta minus G over R sine theta. And that is make that is what I got. That's the same thing. Okay, so that is theta double dot. Now I can solve. I can use that to do a numerical solution in Jupyter Notebooks, but I already did that in WebV Python. And um, you know, solving this in in Jupyter is a little bit different. Uh, you actually can import Web uh, WebV Python. It's called just V Python uh, in Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, I find that it's a little awkward. Um, but that's, that's where I wanted to get. I wanted to solve this uh, for theta double dot and see that it agrees with what I did before. Now I can do another uh, problem that's more intense. Uh, I can do the problem that Andy did and I can keep up with him because that's what this is all about, keeping up with Andy. Uh, so I'll link his video down below. He used Mathematica and I will solve this problem and I'll make two rings in vPython uh, just like he did, but I'll do it in, in web vPython. Okay, so again, this video was for you, which is me. It's for me in the future when I go back and I can't remember how to do this. So I hope this helps you, Rhett, how to do this. Thank you very much, Rhett, for making a video for Rhett. That's enough. <laughs>